hi and welcome to threads of time my little place on youtube where i talk about all the crafty endeavors i'm getting up to today i'm going to be following up my june sewing plans video i'm um, i'm thinking of changing the title maybe to sew and tell or sewing makes or something like that just because I, I'm i not organized enough to do a video every month, as I'm sure you can probably tell. It's now August, so I haven't done a sewing video for two months. And I think it's just because I sew a very one project at a time. I have a kind of strict routine in my sewing room, which is where we are, you can't see. Um, so I tend to do one project at one time. So I start sewing one project and then basically I don't do anything else until I'm finished it. And then after that I clean my sewing room when I first start the process again. So let's start with what I almost completed in the last one, which is now done. Um, it is my 90s tweed skirt, I guess you could call it. So, I have some clips of me wearing it um, that I will speak over, I guess. I basically what do I want to say? So I was sh so basically I had to hack the pattern a little bit to get it to work, but I simply really I made it shorter and just cut more pieces instead of cutting on the fold or double. I bound all the inner seams with the bias binding as well as the hem. And yeah, I've worn it a couple of times. I find the waistband a little kind of like chunky. So I find that I think if I made it again, I would alter that. But yeah, apart from that, it's, it's definitely uh, something I've been wearing this winter. So happy. I'm just gonna drop it on the floor. And I'll show you the line drawing, I guess. So. That's it. I kind of did a combination of this one and this one because this has a button placket down the front. I kind of used that piece to cut twice and sew together. But yeah. The next item I finished was my robe. So it's in this burgundy linen from the fabric store. I have the tie somewhere, but it's not attached. I haven't done the loops. So yeah, show the cutaway. I've worn it a lot. I Has it replaced my ratty cotton on blue polyester robe? No, because the sleeves are quite drapey and they tend to drag in things when I'm cleaning. So I haven't solved that issue, but I definitely love wearing this one. It's, even though it's linen, it's surprisingly warm. It's always interesting, like once you've just got that one extra outer layer on, that you just are much, much warmer. <sighs> And um, I'll show you the pattern envelope again. So this is in robe and nighty. I'm I'm still thinking of sewing the nighty. Sorry, the window's right there. Someone just walked past. I'm still thinking of sewing the nighty, but I kind of have been flip-flopping with it. I thought maybe I would 
so like a 1930s beach pajama jumpsuit but then I didn't really like the PDF pattern print so I decided not to do that um, so yeah it's just been up in the air I'm sure I will use that extremely pretty pink linen also from the fabric store for something and I have a couple of uh, meters of cotton foil which I could do the little teddy in which I think would be really nice to also wear under clothes since I wear slips a lot the other thing that I made was a, I made two of these they're the Persephone pants by Anna and Anna Allen cult classic basically in the sewing community I did actually have to make a couple alterations to the pattern and I did do I think two mock-ups before I did this version so the alterations I had to make I'm quite petite I'm only about 5'3 um, I would say I'm like a medium but let's, let's not talk about that stuff Um, 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 um. So, the alterations I had to do was I was finding there was a lot of, well, in the mock ups, I first did just a simple two size grade. I think I graded between a 10 in the waist and a 14 in the hips because my hips are about 42 inches. These hips don't lie. <laughs> um, so there's that. And I still found in that mock up that the I got, was getting a lot of wrinkling uh, underneath the button cheek. So what I ended up doing is I did a full bum adjustment, which on the pattern piece looked amusing because the curve of that part of the crotch is basically all the way to the smallest size so I have like a 14 hips but my butt depth the curve line was and it almost lines up with the smallest size on the pattern yeah so I'll show you the clip of them too um what else I lowered in the railroad denim version I lowered I'm wearing them right now I lowered the rise and I put in a curve in the belly like I put a little bit more space in the front just to get that so there wasn't so many tension lines because I guess I kind of have a full belly too but I don't really think so I just think because I'm so everything is more in one area compared to someone who would be taller but yeah I really like the denim version and I think they will be well worn and I think all of my alterations like the bum fits really good in both versions um, yeah other item I completed which I spoke about in my June sewing plans was the fact that I was doing a corset course with so it's the Fenway corset and I okay, have it all wrapped up so I don't have a image of me in this just because revealing you know don't feel comfortable so yeah I sewed this up in a beige coutille and just a cotton twill for the lining because I wanted to sew it as close as possible to what the finished product would be like um, yeah I'm really proud I did have a little bit of what I call 
fear of failure, procrastination, which is where you leave something half, half almost finished, left it, all I had to do was do the boning and lace it up. It stayed like that for like a good week and a half. Eventually I bit the bullet and I'm actually quite happy with the outcome. I definitely recommend the class to anyone who would like to sew this corset or hasn't sewn a corset before and would like some guidance. This was my first time drafting to measurements I'd taken and the class definitely takes you through it step by step, it gives you all the mathematical equations you need. Um, you can you send a draft to Alexander and he checks it over and it's great. Very happy, very pleased. I'm excited to sew up my version of this. So I don't think I'm going to be doing it anytime soon. Or there's a few. I just want to do some simple projects as kind of like a palette cleanse. Because as I said, I only do one project at one time. And this project is like a month long. I, I think if I sewed every day, I could get it done in like a week. But because I don't sew every day. And sometimes you just need to take a breather between each step. It takes me a long time to sew a corset up, but my first step is to make the adjustments I need to the flat pattern and then I can go from there. Another item that I talked about in my previous sewing video is the Vogue vintage pattern. I'll just grab it on the desk. This one. So I did do a mock-up for this but I haven't sewn it up because I don't know how I feel about the dress. So I've just left it as a mock-up. I did just the bodice I didn't really feel happy with how the, you can kind of see it, let's see if I can see it, the button placket, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with how that was sitting on me, so it could have just been the, the Muslim, where it's, the, the fabric I used to mock up, it's just cotton, so maybe it was not drapey enough, soft enough, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to leave that one for a while and go back to it maybe at a later date. Um, new kind of things I've been working on, I bought a Vogue bodice block pattern to follow the closet historians tutorial on making that was my hip making a bodice block from it to fit me so this is not so here we go I this is version three I didn't think I would need a lot of alterations because this Vogue pattern it comes with different cup sizes. I can't remember what cup size I went with. I believe I went with the C cup. I'm kind of between a D and a C cup. Yeah. So yeah, I think I went with the C cup in the end and it fit fine. It has a lot of allowance in it and the apex was in the right spot. So that's all good. Um, yeah, and I did the as well so I need to transfer those onto some heavier duty paper or cardboard and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the skirt A-line and I'm going to do a all-in-one sleeve adjustment 
and sew up a kind of 40s inspired all-in-one sleeve which the closet historian has many videos showing her self doing that and yeah I just wanted as she says in her videos if you have a bodice block you don't have to continually make mock-ups I think the one thing I've learnt continually sewing for the last I guess year is that it's the mock-up stage that I dislike the most and I am of the opinion I, or behavior I don't know that I I pretty much always do one and if I that I'd be happy with or use my bodice block to reference the uh, pattern pieces so you know, like shoulder height and things like that because I am so petite short I don't have a lot of length in me I find that my waist is a bit lower than normal to modern patterns but my shoulder like my arm side is quite short and here is quite short so this way I don't have to make any adjustments to a pattern I like don't have to do a mock-up every single time and it'll just make my sewing life a little bit quicker and yeah um, my so that's my future plans basically I'm going to sew a couple of those dresses I'm gonna see how the first one fits me and then go from there because I know that um, just sewing a pattern in mock-up fabric doesn't always represent what it's going to be like when you actually sew the finished garment yeah um for one we can talk about stash acquisitions i cleaned up my i reorganized sorry this room is on a slant in this old house so you get a look slanted um yeah we moved this into the room and i put all my fabrics in it so i could see them better so yeah and the fabric store was having a sale, so I bought a few more crepes. As you can see these ones down here are new, and there's a new one up here. I got a vintage fabric I'm really excited about, and then I got these from Spotlight. So I have a few new additions in here, so I need to get sewing. Yeah, if you have any questions, criticisms about the video, just leave them below. And I haven't bought a vlogging style camera. I did try to do it on my phone, but then I cracked the camera. So I don't know if I'm going to do like sew with me style videos, but I do like to talk about making. So enjoy i'll see you next time i'm hoping that i can do these somewhat more frequently than a sewing plans video because i can put my plans in what i've made what i'm halfway through almost like a knitting podcast but for sewing so i hope you enjoyed this video and once again my <laughs> battery is flashing at me so I will let you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.